Hi, this is Michelle Martello from MinimaDesigns.com. Today I'm going to give you a tutorial about how to make a click to pop up opt in box. As you can see here on this site that I created, teach.yoga. Now, this is a technique that a lot of clients and readers have been asking me about, and something I've been testing for the last six to eight months. I'm finding much higher conversion rates than on your traditional pop up. By allowing the user to choose to see the pop up, I'm actually seeing a much higher conversion rate. Here's another example of a recently created site, zenstrength.com. We've got a lot of great content on this page, and we're not giving the option to opt in until the very bottom. Now, this is again something you can test and play with, and she's got her great information here, offering a free video, click to pop up. This is a really, really flexible box, so she can change the content and copy at any time, and people can choose to enter in their email address. The other thing that I really love about the click to pop up is that there's so much flexibility in where and when you can use it. So you can see here on teach.yoga, I've got it at the very top of the page. And then as you scroll down at different other points, I have it as well. So I have multiple opportunities to ask for this, and I'm really not limited. It's just a little bit of code, and I'm gonna show you how to do it right now. First things first, you're going to need an account with Optin Monster. Now, this is an amazing premium service. Uh, it does have a yearly fee, but it is totally worth it. And best of all, you can use it on Squarespace, WordPress, or other websites. Now, I primarily work in WordPress, so that's the example I'm going to be showing today. What you want to do is you want to log into your dashboard. This is what it looks like here. And we're going to go ahead and create a new opt-in. Now I've already connected this to the back end of my website and opt-in monster has tutorials on how to do that. So now I'm just going to do create a new opt-in. That's going to take me to this page where I can start to create my campaign. Now I'm just going ahead and call this a minima designs click to test. Now you'll want to give it something that makes sense to you. Maybe you want to do it by month or you're tracking a particular page, whatever you want to call it. That's your campaign title. Only you're going to see that. So don't worry so much about that. Now I'm going to go ahead and add it to the website. I want to add it. Now I have a developer account so I can add it to multiple websites. Uh, if you have more than one website, that's what you'll want to get. Then I'm going to scroll down and you can see here, we've got tons of options. They already have pre-built designs and you can customize these to look pretty much however you want them to look. Uh, I usually use the bullseye theme where I can upload a graphic or I'm also a fan of the simple theme. Now you can see they've got some default text in here that I can just go ahead and change to make my own. I've got an ebook coming out, so I want to start promoting for that. So let me go ahead and change my copy here and how to make, let's see how to get paid online. My new ebooks about all the different ways that you can actually make money and get paid online. So there we go. I'm going to go ahead and start talking about it. So I'm changing the, the main title here. And then uh, I like to give away a freebie. So get my 20 questions you have to ask before you take any money online. And I'll probably play with the copy and I'm just doing this for an example here. So I want to make sure that's centered. So I'm just going to go here. So you can see it's a very similar editing bar like there is in WordPress. So I want to center my copy. I'm happy with that for now. Now I want to get into more of the nitty gritty, changing some colors and things like that. So on here on the left hand side, you're going to see where you actually have the ability to change things out. So the content background is white. Well, maybe I would want that to be black. You know, I can start to, you can see how you can start to play with stuff and how it can dramatically change. Now I, I want to keep it white because I'm going to put this on my website and I'll just change that. Now, if you do know CSS, you are actually able to really, really customize this. For the most part, I don't touch this a whole lot, to be honest with you. I like simplicity and clean, so I'm just going to leave that alone for now. And then you can go back and change the theme if you want it to look like something different. I'm happy with this theme, so I'm going to keep that as is. You may or may not want the first name field. I usually like to get the first name. I think it's kind of a nice thing to have. You can change what displays here. That's the placeholder, so enter your name here. I'm okay with that. Uh, the name color. That's the color that will display when someone types their name in. Um, I'm happy with the gray. Uh, email, same thing is fine. Uh, you can also change fonts here. So by default, they have a number of Google fonts already in there. So you can change it to best match what is in use on your site. I'm OK with this for now. Uh, and then if you want to change the name of the button, so maybe you want to say get your free gift or whatever your language is. And then you can change the button color here. Uh, again, that's something that you'll want to match your branding on your website. You do want to have it to be a, a dynamic color so it really pops uh, off of the box here. For now, I'm just going to leave this like this. 
Uh, again, you can change the font. So if you change the font for the placeholder boxes here, you'll also want to change the font just so everything matches and looks good. Happy with that. You can add a privacy statement if you want. There's a lot of customization that you can do here. So next you've got your configuration. So again, you can change your, your title here. Uh, I'm probably going to change this for ebook offer. Just going to change that. Okay. Uh, then you've got some other options here. Now I'm doing a click to pop up. So I'm not actually going to have worry about the opt-in loading for this part. You don't actually have to worry about it here. Now, if you were doing a regular pop-up, you would. Then as we go down here again, most of this, uh, you're not going to need to worry about for a click to pop up again. If you're doing a regular pop-up, you will, this is cookie length, how long, how often people are served this. If they come back to your website, again, a lot of this documentations on the opt-in monster website. Now, a couple things you do want to note, let's say, for example, you want to redirect the user after their opt in to a thank you page. Maybe you're giving them a free gift and it's right there on the page, or you just want to have some other language that displays. You can put the URL of the thank you page here. So if I was going to minimadesigns.com slash thank you, I would put that right in here. Now, this is what we do want to note the load on manual trigger. The manual trigger is actually the click to pop. So we want to make sure that we click that right there. Uh, I'm going to turn off the powered by link. And there's again, a couple other options that you can go into exit intent is when someone is leaving the website, we'll show the pop-up another very, very cool feature from opt-in monster. Like I said, they have so much functionality. You'll want to create multiple versions of these things so that you can play and see what's really most effective on your website. Next, you want to integrate this with your newsletter provider. You'll want to go ahead and select your service. So I'm using MailChimp for this example, and I'm going to go ahead and connect it to something that I've already previously set up. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and set that up to my big first list. So this is to my main list and really cool here. You can choose to use the double opt-in. I usually do that. Uh, you can also choose whether or not to send the welcome email. Uh, this is going to vary again, depending on your newsletter service. So I can also choose if this goes to a particular segment that I've already set up on my main list. Again, really good for targeting uh, niche subscribers, especially if you've got multiple offers, really not going to touch anything else here. So there's a, again, a few more options, but for now, this is good for me. I'm happy. So I'm going to go ahead and save, and then I'm ready to click embed. So you can see, we can use this on WordPress or any website. Very, very cool option. So I'm going to go ahead and install on WordPress. Now I've already got this plugin installed on my website, but if you don't, you're going to go ahead and follow the steps here. So now I'm on the back end of my website and you'll see opt-in monster has its own option here on the left-hand sidebar. I've clicked that and now I'm on the dashboard inside my back end. Now you'll see, I have my two offers showing here. One is set to disabled and one is live. This is the new one here. If your new one isn't showing yet, just go ahead and click refresh opt-ins and that should pull the new one. Now we need to change some settings in order to make this work. So I'm going to go ahead and go into this area here and I want to make sure that uh, I'm, I'm loading this globally and I'm enabling it on the site. Now you can specify this on a per page basis, but I may want to put this on multiple pages on my site. So I'm just going to set those two options. I'm going to scroll down and click save. Great. So now I'm going to go back to that dashboard part of opt-in monster. And the next thing I'm going to need, you'll see here, it says live now. I'm going to need this item here, and this is actually called a slug. We're going to need this special slug that identifies this specific offer to insert onto our page. So next I'm going to go ahead and go to this ebook page that I've already created. And I've already pasted the code that I'm going to need here. And you can uh, copy and paste this from the opt-in monster site. Now you'll want to do this in text mode, not visual. So the code comes in properly here. You'll notice that it's got this manual opt-in trigger. And then uh, it specifies button. Now I put in a special class on here, depending on your site, you may have a special class uh, that pulls up buttons. Then that slug that we just talked about, that's right here. So all you'll need to do is copy and paste that slug into this section here. So what I always recommend doing is copying this whole line from opt-in monster, paste it, and then just change what you need to change. So go ahead and paste that slug in here. So now let's go ahead and look at this on the actual page that I've created. Go to the page. You can see the button style here. Now I don't have anything else on this page yet. I'm going to go ahead and click that. And here is the pop-up. So I can go back and change the copy, do whatever else I need to, but this will allow me to start to play and test and see what's converting. Now, not only will I be notified in my actual newsletter subscribers, but I can always go back to my account listing here and I can see 
my visitors and conversions. This is one I set up a couple weeks ago so I can see I've got a pretty high conversion rate and this was a traditional pop-up. So I'm curious to see what my click to pop-up will get. For more information and tutorials, come visit me at minimadesigns.com.